you're going to need to sacrifice in terms of building that story to try and make it fit the count. I don't do that. I write it. And so when I start the story and when I'm done, that's how long it is. I mean, I don't, I mean I've only ever had one editor ask me to make a story shorter, and I said no. I've had couples say make it longer, and I said yes. I'll always add words. I'll never take them out. So, I, you know, I'm not saying, oh, it would be great if I could keep this under 3,000, so I'm going to sacrifice this bit of character growth. It's a story. It is what it is. And so when it's done, I'm done. And when it's not, I'm not. Is that the same view you take as the editor? Well, well, as, <sighs> all right, when I first started editing, I paid a penny a word, and nobody knew who I was or cared. So I had to lead out of the seven stories in my first issue of my first magazine, I had to get six of them rewritten so that the quality would be up to, you know, so so we did a lot of that. By my third issue, I had Hal Clement, Barry Longyear, and, and a few other writers in, and suddenly all I had were big name authors. I had Harlan Ellison sending me something. And so I, then I stopped asking people to rewrite because I had enough stuff that didn't need it. So as you become established, you get lots of rewrite requests from the smaller magazines because they got to fill their pages and they want the stuff to be good. But as you get bigger and everyone knows who you are and you pay more money, then as an editor, I could go through that or I can just buy Harlan's next story. <laughs> so that's if, that's what happens. If, if you're looking to short, you know, if uh, I agree with, with Warren, you shouldn't uh, arbitrarily adjust the story length you know, unless, now sometimes, you know, if you have a story that's 4,400 words and you're submitting to a venue that the upper limit's 4,000, yeah. the <laughs> stuff I would look 40, for, yeah. the stuff I would look for is, as I said before, is, a, is, a, is when you look at it a second time, if the scene is not memorable as it needed, you might be able to trim there. The other thing usually is, you can usually have, you know, every time you need a plot element fulfilled, you tendencies to introduce a character you can usually find to go back and you can you can uh, telescope characters. You don't have, you know, everybody doing different. Uh, you know, you usually look at it as a good sign if you lose at least one character in editing as you combine the functions of two characters. And when you do that, that's how you can do some of that contraction. But you know, unfortunately, I have had cases where I had stories that I really wanted to get to a certain venue. Like a good one, Daily Science Fiction is a good venue. Mm. But like my story, Great White Ship, was over 3,800 words. And they changed their word length. They wanted 1,500 or less. And sometimes you're just not going to be able to do it. But be honest to the story. Because otherwise, you're going to hack it to pieces, and it's going to not make any sense. And not only will you be rejected, you look bad. So, but if it's, if it's close, those are the things you can, can look for. I don't know, Chris, I don't know if you've had to go through that process. Making sure that your story is starting exactly where it needs to start. You know, with the hook at the moment. You know, you don't have a lot of time in short stories to grab. Um, your readers are, especially I presume online, well, your editor, your editor is going to read, and if he doesn't get to something of extreme interest within what, one paragraph? What's your limit? Three, unless it's a really long paragraph, but yeah, I usually okay. read three paragraphs before, if it hasn't done anything for me, I'm done. Right, so it, making sure that your story is starting um, at a critical point, you know, so mm -hmm. call it a, a highly, extremely interesting point, um, not Oh, you know, light filtered through the leaves as blah blah blah. You don't have yeah. the luxury of these, you know, prosaic descriptions and and whatever. So you you kind of want to start something pretty pretty fast, and then making sure it's ending. You don't have to, you know, tie everything with a nice neat bow. End on a zinger. Make sure that um, a lot of your readers may, can solve the rest of the problems, or don't need to know, you know. Who uh, they might need to know who done it, but not all the the motive and everything else. You know, it, it depends on how much you're developing your story, what the critical satisfying ending is, end it right there. So. I think most of you are probably intelligent enough, this being a self-selected audience, to know don't ever try to increase the length of a story to get paid more. <laughs> like a word count. Editors can smell that before they open the file. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just wondering what you personally really love about a short story that you can't do with any other length. What is it about st short stories that really draws you? I'm not sure if it's anything about the sto short story so much as I discovered science fiction through anthologies. Mm -hmm. So I got hooked on 
the short story. Uh, that was my introduction to the field. I don't know if there's anything about him intrinsically that attracts me more than a novel, except that that's how I started, and so okay. that was my first love. That was that was what brought me to the field. Mm -hmm. I like it because it's bite-sized. You know, I can sit down and read a short story in half an hour, an hour, however long it takes, and have a complete story, and not have to string it on. And it's like, oh, you know, two days later I pick it up again because I have more time to read and you know continue on my book. And it, it depends on how much free time I have, but it could take me a couple weeks to finish a book for book club or whatever. But if I've got a short story or a collection of short stories, you know, I can read one in one sitting and be like, ooh, that was really cool, you know. So kind of get some conclusion and an ending. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a, it, you don't have to invest that much time, so it's almost, in, you know, instant gratification. It's a bit crass. But also, a well-written story will still give you that sense of wonder at the end where you feel satisfied. It says, now that was a well-spent 15 to 30 minutes of my life. Uh, the lag time between a publication of a story, you know, when I submitted Great White Ship to Daily Science Fiction, it's, it's a while until it's published. It's like submitted in the fall of one year, it was published in the spring of the next. When it was published, I actually sat down and, and read it online, and it had been long enough, I had enough distance. I read the story, and when I got to the end, it was so nostalgic, and I had a sense of wonder, I started to tear up. And it's my story, I knew how it ended, but it just affected me that way. I said, I guess that's why it's considered a decent story, yeah. you know, and that, I, I gave myself a sense of wonder. <laughs> impressed myself. I didn't know I had it in me. <laughs> Any other questions? We've got about 12 minutes left, I think, right? Two. These are 15 minutes. Actually, oh, okay. Any last questions? Yes, sir. Recommendations. You completed a short story, places to send it. Oh, well, it depends on what kind. If it's hard science fiction, you know, with some reasonably intelligent scientific basis, analog. I once submitted a story to analog where I had a guy tinkering in his garage who combined an MRI machine with a radar detector with some sort of can scanner so you could make a thing to put on your dashboard like a, a radar detector, but it would scan the brain of the person in the other car so you could know what the hell was wrong with them. <laughs> <laughs> and Stan Schmidt sent it back and said, look, this is a funny story, but we've got too many, uh, we have too many readers who know science and know your rubber science is complete bullshit and I don't want to put up with their letters to the editor. <laughs> and he was totally right. That's never been, that's never been redone. So you got to know your market. If it's fantasy, it's fantasy. If it's, if it's uh, in between, and that's one of the reasons why Asimov's has always been a good venue, because they'll run hard SF and they'll run fantasy. You know, the difference between fantasy is it's magic and hard SF is it's scientific and if it's in between it's the twilight zone you know you know Rod Sterling always had these things he had technology but it never did explain how it worked you know how does it work it works just fine <laughs> <laughs> so you got to research your market and you have to look at the story and you can usually do that research online any other questions that we want to sum up here panel right go out there do it <laughs> yeah, just keep writing. Just write. Write, have people read it, tell you what they think, come back, rewrite, edit, send it out, and then start sending. See see what sticks. Yeah, now that's a good thing that Chris said, is that you're not operating in a vacuum and that there are a lot of sympathetic writing groups around that, are, that have professional writers. So you really need other people to look at your story before you send it anywhere. Because no matter how brilliant you are, how many times you've looked at it, you need some feedback and you have to be able to take feedback because if it's not from your writing group or your writing partner or your critique group or your mentor, then it's going to be from your editor or that it's just, or it'll just die and you'll never know why. So you got to let it go first before you, before well, you send it go, anywhere yeah. in my yeah. opinion. Well, thank you. And, you know, I'm Honestly, the, probably the best thing you could do is to buy my book. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Buy my book. Buy my book. But, but so I still have a few unsold copies, and the later the convention gets to conclusion, the lower the price will get. Yeah. As I <laughs> contemplate dragging them home. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. You were a great audience. Thank you.